Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good degening hours for anyone that's awake between 1 a.m. to 5 a.m. Today we will be this will be one of the first the first episode of a series I'm thinking of doing called Let's Talk Servants. Because I love fate so much that I tweet about it too many fucking times that I think I should just make it make content about it. Who knew? Who knew? But, yeah, today we'll be talking about three servants for the first video, surprisingly. Three servants. Three out of the twelve paladins of Charlemagne, which will be Roland, Astolfo, and Bradamante. We'll be focusing on Roland, Astolfo, and Bradamante first, then we'll... Not Charlemagne. Charlemagne will have his own video, because of how, di how, like, big his, like, lore and story is. I doubt, like, he'll... I'll doubt, I doubt he'll, like, fit into this without making this video, like, longer than it's already gonna be. I can tell this video is gonna be at least 30 minutes long. Guaranteed. So, we're gonna start with Roland first, then move on to Astolfo, and then Bradamante. So, let's get on with it. So, we'll start with Roland. Roland is the leader of the Twelve Paladins and is most recognized as one of the most popular and renowned paladins. He is famed for being the wielder of Durandal that he received from Charlemagne, however, he's a bit weak in regards to romance and acts out of madness when rejected. He was brave enough to smash an orc terrorizing the seaside with an anchor. However, when he was however when he however he abandons his mission halfway and chases after a beautiful woman named Angelica. But, but, she rejected the idea of falling in love and eloping with a mere soldier that hit an orc with an anchor. A mere soldier. Okay, out of her pride. This caused Roland to go mad, throwing off all his clothes and rampaging around while nude. Yeah, this happened. He got so pissed out of a rejection that he ran around rampaging and just because he was nude. This is where his cousin Astolfo who is one of the other 12 paladins, came in and started cross-dressing, hence why Astolfo looks like that. So yeah. Astolfo, not, this wasn't, that wasn't specifically the reason Astolfo cross-dressed, but this is, that is one of them. Astolfo also finds it cute. So, back to Roland. Back to Roland. After um, Astolfo dressed as a woman for him to calm him down, Roland was trapped by the resentment of his stepfather, Ganelon. Although he and other 12 pal the other 12 paladins of Charlemagne fought hard, the enemy army was 400,000 400, against 20,000 of their own troops. Heroes fell one after another in the face of overwhelming numbers. When Roland was on the verge of death, he made an attempt to break Durandal to keep it from falling into enemy hands. But its indestructible nature did not allow that for did not allow for that. Roland wouldn't blow the horn to call for reinforcements until the very end. Hence, why he fell. That's how he dies. The moment the re after he blew the horn, he goes. Up, he just dies. Reinforcements came in. They were like, "We're here." Oh shit, he's dead. Yeah. Now. Onto as a, his stats as a servant, Roland is a servant that's analyzed to be surefire with a surefire win during a Holy Grail war, unless something goes awry. Naturally, he has a few weaknesses. Most notably, would be his inability to resist temptation. Roland can only pray that a beautiful knockout woman doesn't get involved during the Holy Grail war. Honestly, that makes me laugh so much. It just makes me laugh so much. And of course, it would always happen at the worst possible time for Roland. Yeah. Honestly, feel bad for him sometimes. 
Yeah. Roland's main noble phantasm is Durandal. It is said to be an unbreakable and invincible. Unbreakable and invincible. And is often compared to Excalibur as an immortal and indestructible holy sword. In terms of pure destructive ability, it is compared to a blow from Charlemagne's Joyeuse Order. However, as Charlemagne is originally a king, not a knight, he'd be defeated in a head-on collision with someone like Roland. Roland's second noble phantasm is Ronchevox Ol Oliphant. I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm, I can't speak French, so sorry for anyone. So Sorry for butchering it. It can be used to cause a break. It, was, it could be used to break the situation by blowing on it, by blowing on it. In a sense, it is similar to the miracle powers possessed by the Holy Sir Durandal. The louder you blow, the easier it is to stop the situation, but also the more damage it does to Roland. So basically, it's the stronger he does it, it becomes a suicide noble phantasm, like Stella. Well, well, Stella's also much more destructive, I would say. So. Roland is one of the strongest paladins, is the strongest paladin due to his, um, due to Durandal, due to Durandal. And, yeah, I like him out of all of them. So, well, he's my second favorite. The next one's gonna be my actual, my favorite out of paladins, kind of. Well, it's, it's a tie between them. Roland is the leader of these paladins, and that means, yeah. That means he's the leader. That's it. <laughs> he is the leader and the strongest, I would say. So if we compare him to the Knights of the Round Table, he basically represents Lancelot in a lot of reasons, such as the love part and being the lead, not leader, being the strongest of the paladins, basically. Out of with the sheer reason of Durandal, I would say he is the strongest. Now, on to Astolfo. Onto Astolfo. The cutest of the paladins, I would say. The cutest, you hear me. I like traps. Don't judge me. Astolfo's adorable, okay? Astolfo's adorable. In the legend of Charlemagne, he is the son of an English king and one of Charlemagne's twelve faithful paladins. Among the twelve paladins of Charlemagne, Astolfo is said to be the most handsome, eternally optimistic, and completely lacking in sense. As the legends go, Astolfo was said Astolfo was said to be quite the ladies' man. As a, as a cousin of Roland, Astolfo is included among those twelve amongst among those twelve that being said that being said, Astolfo was famed as weak in the legends. Stolfo is the weakest of the paladins, but the most handsome. Yeah. I, I'm not against it, I can agree with it. Because, look at this. And people say, like, OG waifus are, like, the best. Or, like, normal waifus are the best. Boob or ara ara bullshit is the best. But I'm gonna call a certain person out. You hear me, Pamobu? You hear me? This, this right here, is is true beauty. He is a two for one, a waifu, and a husband. Though he has both, he has both ways, and I shall show you the pinnacle of all of this, the pinnacle of waifu and beauty. This is the pinnacle of all that. That is the pinnacle. You see, you you see now. Do you see now, Pomobu? I hope you're watching this. And that is the pinnacle. This is the pinnacle of waifu. This is the pinnacle of waifu right here. That is the pinnacle right there. Astolfo has created many legends as he was an adventurer who flew to all who flew all over the world and even reached the moon. Yes, without a spacesuit. <laughs> so it wasn't Neil Armstrong that was the first man on the moon, it was Astolfo. Through his journeys, 
He had won numerous mystic codes such as his flute, his grimoire, and his shining golden lance. Astolfo brought rise to various legends on the back of mounts like a griffin and the famous Rebecano, but particularly famous among them is something inconceivable for this world, the hippogriff, which is a half which is a which is a um, it has the front body of an eagle and the back body and the back of a horse. Basically. Although many are Many are the glorious tales of Astolfo. It is said that he had, he has made just as many mistakes. He was continually def defeated in riding tournaments, fell victim to many toma thaumaturgal <laughs> giggle fuck mistake tr tr the da thaumaturgal traps and even lost in a matter of hours. The reason that he had picked up the moon, he had picked up the moon, my script goddamn how, Astolfo never faltered, he did not seem to consider failure or defeat as blunt, as blunders in the first, in the first place. Astolfo's like just ever optimistic servant, or character in general, so, yeah. I like Astolfo for that reason. This is also how Astolfo looked like, by the way, before he got into cross-dressing. <coughs> That's how he is. That's how he looked like, apparently, from the Apocrypha manga, I think? Which I'm shocked about, honestly. I honestly wish this would be a costume. I honestly hope it's a costume. <coughs> <coughs> Let me just drink some water. Stay hydrated, kids. Yeah, there we go. That's it mainly for Stolfo, so let's get on to his noble phantasms. Which is, oh boy, a lot. Let's start with one of his first noble phantasms, I would say. La Black Luna, magic flute that calls panic. It is a hunting horn granted to Astolfo by the good witch Longistila of Avalon to drive away a large flock of harpies. Considered the most extreme of his noble phantasms, it emits a magical sound similar in nature to the roar of a dragon. The cry of a giant bird and the neighing of a divine horse, slamming targets within range with the f with the force of an explosion of a s explosion of sound. Rather than emulating the harpies, rather than emulating the harpies that ran away in fear. After hearing that sound, as told in the legend, it is a weapon of wide scale destruction. It is kept in a small size that can be hung from the belt on his hip but increases in size to, encir to encircle his entire body when activated when activated sorry about that i didn't exactly memorize my script so this is what it looks like he's used this in the apocrypha anime by the as well so yeah it gets bigger if he's gonna like use it basically next noble phantasm the Trap of Argelia, down with a touch, is a shining ornate golden lance that belonged to Argelia, a knight and prince of Cathay, that was later taken by Astolfo as one of the many treasures obtained through his escapades. Carelessly named and nicknamed just Argelia, it is a spear with a low-killing ability that acts only as a cavalry lance, unstrengthened by magecraft, unable to pierce through all defenses and lacking any special killing blows like piercing the heart such as got gay bulg or yeah gay bulg for piercing the heart or anything that's powerful like vasavi shakti although it will still cause the enemy to bleed and kill them should it penetrate their heart 
Killing is not its primary intent, but it does prove deadly in battle. It was Argelia's beloved land, said to cause anyone it touched with its golden tip to fall. Bring him much glory in jousting tournaments, and upon the battlefield where heavily armored knights would be led, would be led to their inevitable death should they fall during the jousting tournament, in which he was victorious against all the knights that challenged him in jousting matches, including including Astolfo, including Astolfo, Argelia ran away from a knight who refused to surrender after being knocked off his horse. Someone that Argelia reluctantly fought with his own sword without using his lance, but ultimately couldn't match him in combat, and he left his magic lance behind during his fight. Or fight, I think I misspelled that. <laughs> Next, Noble Phantasm. We're just going to keep Astolfo because I didn't exactly have an image for the grimoire. Is Casur de Logistel. Destruction Declaration is a thick magic binding leather book. It's his grimoire, specially given by by an inherited from a witch named Logistila to Astolfo. Sorry if I butcher that. After the former was charmed by the latter, it contains records of of the means to shatter any magecraft, granting its owner the passive ability to deal with magecraft of A rank and below. Through his magic resistance, is, though his magic resistance is normally D rank, it is greatly elevated to A rank, effectively making him immune to all modern magecraft. He also used this in Fate Apocrypha by by blocking or just canceling out the shot Semiramis or Assassin of Red shot at him. So that's how like that's how Kessur de Logista works. The next noble phantasm is Hippogriff, which I forgot to take a picture of. Hippogriff, otherworldly phantom horse, is favor is his is the favored mount used by Astolfo. Astolfo secured Hippogriff from the evil Magus Atalante Atlante, not Atalante. More specifically, it was obtained from Atlante by Bradamante, and then she later later loaned it to Astolfo, though his various legends tell him tell of him riding on the backs of mounts like a griffin and the most famous Rebicano. The hippogriff is particularly famous among them. A hippogriff appears in the story of Orlando Furios, Furioso. The Frenzy of Roland in English, where Astolfo and his comrades also appear. This story includes the theme of the Hippogriff makes an appearance here, so no matter how strange it may seem, there is nothing that is truly impossible. In The Frenzy of Roland, Astolfo even goes to the moon with the Hippogriff in order to save Roland. Oh, looks like Roland also went to the moon, I think. Okay. Now, on to the next paladin, which is, surprisingly, Bradamante. Just kidding. Yeah, it is Bradamante. I'm just trying to find the image. There we go. Bradamante. Now, the last one of them is the last one of them. Then this video is officially done. I'm not... Sorry if like, the video quality is bad and all that, but yeah. Bradamante, also known as the Knight of the White Wings. Bradamante was one of the 12 paladins of Charlemagne, and she is the cousin of Roland and Astolfo. After Astolfo fought through several battles with his, with his lance, Trap of Argelia, he entrusted it to Bradamante. She is a pure-hearted shield maiden and the Knight of the White Plume. Her ancestor is Hector, the legendary hero of Troy, and her lover, the knight Ruggiero, is counted among his descendants. Yeah. There's nothing wrong about it, but yeah. I'm just gonna show a few fan art. Like, Astolfo, I found a lot of art of Astolfo and Bradamante together, so... 
It's not that they're a ship, it's more of a, they're just besties, I guess. Yeah. Famously known as the White Feathered Knight, a virtuous female knight that was born of, of a, a born a princess of the union between the king's younger sister, Be Beatrice, and Duke Aim Amon of the House Clermont. Her brother, the knight Ronaldo, was also a member of the Twelve Paladins and wielded the magical sword Fusberta. I think that's how you pronounce it. Like her brother, Bradamante was widely renowned as a master swordsman, and it is said that she took the rear guard during the battle against King Agramant Agramante. I don't know. I don't know the pronunciation. Agramante? <laughs> King Rodamont, no, wait, wait, when the tide turned against Charlemagne's army and fought a magnificent duel with the enemy, enemy commander, King Rodamont and of Algiers, after many adventures, Bradamante fell in love with Rogerio, a knight and commander of an enemy nation. Hence why she always, like, looks for Rogerio in a lot of, like, cutscenes. Not cutscenes, and just voice lines in general. Like, she loves Regaria, you can tell that. Like, loyalty, I would say. That is what you call loyalty. That is what you call loyalty, people. <laughs> I feel like I'm attacking someone when I'm not even attacking anyone to begin with. God damn. Um, where was I again? Yeah, there we go. She endured a great number of trials so their romance might might finally blossom. Whether he was kidnapped by an evil magician or ensnared by the enchantress Alicina, Al Alcina. <laughs> and his name's John <laughs> No why. Or if a Greek prince sought her hand in sought her hand in marriage, she would confront any adversity head on and never give in. That's what you call dedication. She loves she loves she loves Gregario a lot. She really does. She truly does. Now on to her noble phantasms. We let's start with Bolsir de Atlante. Dazzling, dazzlingly beautiful is the flashing magic shield. Is a noble phantasm of Bradamante, a shield owned by her lover Gregario, who. A shield, but in fact, that looks like a fucking Primo Gem in Genshin Impact. I'm sorry if anyone didn't realize that before. <laughs> a shield, it was a shield owned by Ruggerio, who was abducted by the evil magician Atlante by releasing the true name. An intense light of magical energy is emitted from the shield and enforces stunning judgment while bestowing damage onto the target. Even if they aren't stunned, their agility parameters is temporarily lowered dramatically by disorienting their vision. Also known for that one hell of a shot for a noble fa- Fuck, I disappeared. That one hell of a shot of a noble phantasm. I think I have it here. If it's not here, it's in the thumbnail. <laughs> if it's not, if I can't find, it's not here, that means if you want to know what I meant by shot, if you're not an FGO player, it's in the thumbnail. The next Noble Phantasm, and the last one, Angelica Cathay, resplendent is the beautiful princess ring. Is a noble phantasm of Bradamante, this magical ring was once the property of the beautiful of the beautiful foreign princess Angelica, with whom the paladins Roland and Rinaldo fell madly in love with. It is thought to nullify any and all magecraft through various twists of fate. Bradamante came to possess it and made great use of its power in saving Ruggerio from evil from the evil magician Atlante, I think is how you pronounce it. She owns both her A-rank magic resistance 
originally a C rank, and for her cancellation of Magecraft skill to the effect of this noble phantasm. It becomes this it was a C rank without the ring, but an A rank with it. Therefore, that's how it is. Like from the looks of it, both like Astolfo and Bradamante have very similar noble phantasms, if anything. So yeah. So surprisingly that's it for all of them. That is it for all twelve paladins of Charlemagne. Sorry if this video was like very bland, I would say. I'm sorry for that. But I I thank you for watching this video and and stuff. Please give it a like and support the and support and support me on YouTube. Please give it a like and subscribe. And I hope to see everyone in the next video. Which I probably will announce on Twitter if I'm going to continue this or not. So, probably if I continue this or not, I'm probably going to do... Hmm, I'm not sure yet. Uh, I'll think about it. But thanks for every... Thank you. Please drop a like and subscribe. Share this to your friends. And I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.